Hey, we're back. And uh, in this module, we're going to talk about configuring Postgres, configuring our Postgres client so that we can connect to the local Postgres database um, that exists in a, a Docker image that we built. Um, so I'm going to pull up VS Code really quick and just show you what I'm talking about um, and talk about Docker Compose. So if you're not familiar with Docker Compose, it's basically YAML and we're defining our containers through um, code. And so you can see we have a couple services here. We have Magic and we have Postgres. And magic uh, refers to our mage instance. You can see it's pulling from the mage image. Um, but Postgres is a Postgres image. Uh, and, and so that means we're pulling down this Postgres image, spinning up a Postgres database in uh, a local instance. Um, and then we're configuring our database name, our username, our password. Um, and we're exposing port 5432, which is the default Postgres port, to a port of our choosing. Um, and, and this is just an environment variable interpolation syntax. and so. We're saying, hey, all of our environment variables are in this .env file, um, and then we can reference those environmental variables with this, this syntax. And so uh, what we're doing here is um, pulling variables locally and then kind of injecting them into our Docker containers. And the benefit is that .env files are almost always in Git ignore um, files. So that means you don't have to worry about accidentally committing those files to version control and exposing your passwords. And our passwords don't exist as code in any of our, our images. So it's very useful um, for ensuring security and sort of ensuring secret management when you're developing locally to do something like this. So for this uh, demo, we're going to, after we configure this, write data to a Postgres instance. We need to make sure we're connected to that Postgres instance in Mage. Um, and there are a couple ways to do this. We're going to do it the simple way. Um, and I'm going to switch over to the, the Mage um, uh, GUI to, to show you that this is the same uh, as VS Code, but we could also do this in VS Code because you might notice our file structure here is the same as what we have in Mage because everything in Mage is just code. You know, like our IO config file is the same, our data exporters, our data loaders, they're all just files. And so we're moving these into the image and that's what Mage runs on. But if I switch over to Safari here, I have our Mage instance up and we can just go to files. Um, and you're going to have, so we're already in IO config, but this is where we manage our um, connections. And so notice that uh, we have some default Postgres connections here. Um, we have connections to other da databases, um, and you can specify profiles, connection profiles in Mage as well. So the default is default, but if we wanted to have a profile like dev, um, we could do you know something like dev. hard to type today, dev. Uh, and so these would be under the connection profile dev. Um, and this might actually be useful for like our develop separating development and production. So let's do that for this tutorial. We'll create um, Postgres dev credentials. So I'm gonna drop these down here. And this is defining the variable in like mage speak effectively. But what we need to do is pull in our environment variables because that's what's being passed in at Docker. And the way you interpolate environment variables in mage is actually through Jinja templating which is done with two brackets. So if you're familiar with dbt, you might be familiar with Jinja. It's just a way of interpolating variables. That means kind of like taking, injecting variables into strings. Um, and we use the env var syntax. And so all of these are actually just the same. I define them to be the same. You can define them differently. Um, but, and, and this has to be in a, a separate quote, um, env var postgres db name uh, will get us the, um, environment variable for the DB name. And since they're all the same, we can basically just copy and paste this over. Mage also supports multi-cursor. So if you want to do that, you can do that. I'm just doing it one at a time uh, for good old fashioned sake. So we're going to interpolate these variables under the dev profile, hit save. And now we have a dev profile with uh, a bunch of Postgres configuration settings that's being pulled in from Docker which is where we're actually defining the Postgres uh, instance. So this should be correct. This, this shouldn't be much to worry about here. Um, so if I navigate over to uh, a pipeline, um, we'll create a new pipeline. And this is just going to be a batch pipeline. And we'll actually we'll rename this, this pipeline uh, to be um, test config, um, just to make sure that everything works as we'd expect. So. Um, if we edit the pipeline, we can actually just put in a very simple block. We could do something like a transformer, uh, a generic transformer, we'll say test Postgres. 
we actually don't even need a data or actually let's scratch that we'll we'll um we'll drop the, the transformer it's actually easier we'll do a data loader a sql data loader and we'll call this test postgres so if you're following along you're learning how to delete blocks as well that's part of this tutorial so i apologize for that um so we can use our postgres connection now note there are two profiles right we defined a dev profile um, and we'll use raw SQL for this. Raw SQL just removes a lot of the mage templating and means what you type is exactly what's being run uh, versus we have some uh, like helper functions and whatnot. So we'll do a select one. So what this is going to do is it's gonna connect to our Postgres database. It's gonna run the command select one in Postgres. So mage isn't running this, Postgres is running select one. And that's how we know that we can connect to Postgres and then it will return the result from the database. And that confirms that the connection worked. So if I command enter, we get a warning <laughs> about a package, uh, but then we initialize our connection. Uh, we open the connection, execute the command, and return one. So our Postgres connection is established. We know that we have connection to our local Postgres instance, um, and we can move forward with building uh, the rest of our pipeline.